off and lodge in whatever happens to be passing by. In fact, one of the species is called jumping choya. It doesn't really jump, but it seems to. And then later on, when they fall off, they'll root and grow in a new location. Like a, like a, a cockle burr around here. Yeah, only those are seeds. These are hunks of the stem, but okay, yes. Okay, so they won't actually germinate like a seed would, but they'll just go into the ground and then start growing from there. Right. Okay, okay. The, so, the salt sea was cool. I liked you the like salt the, sea. The, she's a geologist. It's stinky. It's a, it's, it smells like an open sewer to me. I didn't like the salt and sea. At this time of the year, it wasn't. Okay. They have some nasty algae blooms, but apparently not in the dead of winter. Now, the dead of winter, well, I was there in the dead of winter. It was stinky, but there were a ton of uh, a, a, a white bird, a lot of white birds around there. I don't know the name of them. I don't, I don't believe they were snow geese, but there were a lot of white birds around there. Well, we saw a lot of gulls. Uh, there were also... Uh, some, some, there were some terns there. There mm-hmm. were some... Uh, there was a black neck plover or something. Stilt. And, and some, stilt. And some cormorants. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were plenty of birds out there. Are there still fish in that sea? Tilapia. Okay. That's it. Well, uh, you know, there there are no native fish to the sea because the sea isn't native. Correct. Correct. It it it's an accident. It was the the Colorado River had flooded, I believe. Uh helped along by an irrigation project that went bad. And that was close to 100 years ago, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And the water's still there. Well, and it's evaporating and there's all kinds of what do we do to save it because this uh, a whole recreation industry had grown up around it. And uh, as you mentioned, the water quality is deteriorating and everything else. And uh, there's the Sonny Bono Wildlife Refuge at one end of it because he was big in trying to get federal money to save the salt and sea. And, Correct. Uh, well, anymore, I mean, th- there was a big, I guess in the 60s, I guess, there was a lot of recreation there. But I don't know if there's any recreation there now, is there? Uh, the, the, uh, I do know that the uh, the state park there lets out kayaks and has a boat launch. Um, yeah, they said the water there is something like 36 times as salty as the ocean. Yeah. You can't sink in it. Really? I guess because there's so much salt. It probably isn't up to the Dead Sea, but it's getting close. Uh-huh. So it, it just seemed ridiculous to get that close to it and not go see it. Well, sure, I I, I understand that. I, I most people are disappointed, I, but if you weren't, wonderful. Well, this is the fascination with topography. Yeah, in two places, I got to be below sea level and breathe air. There in the Death in Valley. Death Valley, yeah, yeah. So, we, Death Valley was part of the Ridgecrest experience. I'm trying to think if there was anything else while we were in Palm Desert. We mentioned. Uh, the Santa Rosa Mountains and Joshua Tree and uh, Living uh, Desert. Um, Steve's Little Park. Well, yes, uh, that actually was an, also an interesting experience. Where were we coming back from when we saw Steve's Little Park? We were coming down the hill from that po- the Indian's Palm Canyon. Okay. See, this, this fellow, his father was from out there. Okay. And his... Uh, he ended up as a BLM mounted ranger, mm-hmm. Riverside County mounted deputy, and also is a planning city planning manager. Yes, uh, for Rancho Mirage. Okay. Well, one of the things he did while he was out there, and this was in the 80, the eighties, uh, was he designed a little park, and it was right across the street from Frank Sinatra's house. Really, really. So we had to go up there because there's a an audio a push a button audio thing of Frank Sinatra, you know, welcoming you to his, this little park. Very cool. And Steve was very proud of this this little park that he had designed. And we had to go and look at every flower and every tree and every sidewalk and uh, every stand and almost every park bench. Well, I, I will. Fortunately, t- it was not that big. Well, the the whole, the whole that whole area though, the Palm Springs Palm Desert area, there's no shortage of good restaurants either. So I assume that you stumbled upon one or two. Apparently, mm. breakfast is really big there. 
Really? Well, we wound up going out to breakfast once. This was near the end of the trip. I, should we jump ahead and explain what happened to Steve after we left, Joe? Go ahead. Uh, the day after we left, Steve had a stroke. Oh, my. Uh, and he's back home now and going through some therapy. He's in pretty good shape. But instead of going to the Indio Date Festival, which was our plan for the last day there, mm -hmm. which we were going to go to with Steve, mm -hmm. we went to visit him in the hospital. But we had to get a hotel room in Palm Springs because mm -hmm. the family had moved into his house where we had been staying. Uh, and anyway... It was like we we went to this one restaurant and the waiter tried to seat us three times and somebody else had jumped into the table he was taking us to. But we finally got seated. But when we left, they were lined up out the door, down the parking lot really? and everything. And we're just sitting there going, oh, my God. Apparently, breakfast is really, really big in Palm Springs. At least it's that late. day it was. It's late. Like, cause this was like eleven, but I mean, it, it, it was. I, I'm taking it they all go play golf and then go out to breakfast. Now that could be. Uh, I'll admit this is the only uh, city I've ever been in that has a golf cart lane on their roads. <laughs> there is a lot of golf there out there in Palm Springs. Uh, the one, the one restaurant that we went to that kind of surprised me. There's a place called Tommy Bahamas. Yeah. Which is actually part clothing store mm -hmm. and part restaurant. And it wasn't like, you know, in, in St. Louis back in the day, uh, oh, famous bar had a little, you know, a tea room or whatever. Sure. I mean, this was a full-fledged restaurant. Sure. And a full-fledged clothing store. I was like, that's just a little odd. I mean, I'm not used to things like that. They get you coming and going. <laughs> <laughs> so you were, you were amazed with the desert. I mean, uh, when I first started going to California, I thought, well, you know, you, you got the beaches and you got the mountains. And a buddy of mine says, you know what? Beaches are fine. The mountains are great, but you're really going to like the desert. I thought to myself, yeah, sure. Right. He was right. I love the desert. And maybe it's because you can go to Florida and find the ocean, okay? You can go to Colorado and find mountains. But I think only in Southern California you can find the desert and the mountains and the ocean all within just a few-hour drive. I've got to stick in here one of my favorite quotes from Ed Edward Abbey, who wrote Desert Solitaire, amongst uh, other things. Everything in the desert either burns you, bites you, sticks you, or stings you. That's not inaccurate, but uh, <laughs> it's not inaccurate. But it, it's it's the desert is a peaceful place. It's a quiet place. But I I will add something is because uh, where we were, we we straddled actually the line goes through Joshua Tree. The southern part of the national park has no Joshua trees. So. Correct. Correct. Uh, that's, and that's part of the Anzo Borrego Desert. That, well, they call it the Colorado Desert. But, sure. And then you move north into the Mojave, and there are mm -hmm. Joshua trees. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in both in the case of Joshua trees and so the saguaro cactus in the Sonoran Desert, mm -hmm. the distribution of them is very similar to the distribution of tr trees in the forest. You know, and... Uh, you don't usually think of the desert as being that productive, but the plant density is just as high. It's just they're adapted to the dry conditions until you get to Death Valley. I've never been any place that desolate before. Isn't it amazing? If there's a bush an acre, you're doing well. Yeah, you can look And there is no grass or anything else. It's rock. Yeah, you can look a long way and not see a whole lot in Death Valley proper. Uh once a year, I try to go to, and I don't, know if, I don't know if you went past there or not, but it's called uh, a town called Panamint Springs, right on, on uh, California 190. And there's a place there called the Panamint Springs Resort. Uh, it's not your, your typical resort, but it's a, they've got a restaurant. They've got camping grounds. They've got a few uh, uh, cabins that you can stay at. But it's it's like an it's like an entrance way to Death Valley. It's actually in Panamint Valley, which is a little higher, so it's a little cooler. We went through there. Okay, okay, yeah. It's uh that's where I spend my time in the desert. That's where I go 
to spend my time on the psychiatrist's couch once a year. Uh, I make that my home base, and I just wander around Death Valley. It's wonderful. It's peaceful. Well, we were actually over in Death Valley only one day. So I guess you went to Badwater and to and Furnace Creek, Furnace Creek, and Stovepipe Wells, and all the all the the typical places. But you know, that's sort of like it, that's for geologists. That's sort of like geology at seventy miles an hour. Yeah, because you know, you look down and you can see seven or eight different kinds of rocks. Just out on the desert. That's when you get out and look. Well, that's true, but, you know, you've got a day. You don't have... Sure. You know, you don't have two or three days or even much time to familiarize yourself with what happened, you know, as far as how that how the valleys got there and uh, that sort of thing. And the, the geology in uh, the desert area and the mountain, it, it's so diverse. It is. It's not anything like you know, Missouri. Okay, we've got different kinds of geology, but I mean, this is like you walk across the street, mm-hmm. and it's entirely different. That's true. Uh, in the Panamint Mountains, which is right in Death Valley Park, uh, that's where I go mountain climbing. I mean, there's there's the last time we went in March, April, late March, early April. I forget which thing it was early April. Uh, but we couldn't get up in the mountains because there was still too much snow. The passes were still all full of snow. So even in the park itself, while you still have desert, you have the mountains that where it's very cool. In fact, that's where the Indians would stay. In the summertime, they'd go up into the mountains. In the wintertime, they'd go down into the desert because it was it was warmer. In the summertime, they'd go up into the mountains because it was cooler. Well, the day that we were there with my friend Kathy, she- She's familiar with the area, and she drove. Uh, she took us up to some place, which is called the Charcoal Furnaces. Yeah, the Charcoal Kilns. And those mm-hmm. were built by George Hurst, who was from Stanton, Missouri. Really? And his wife was from St. Clair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And having gone all the way to Southern California and then actually getting up <laughs> somewhat into the that we there was snow and ice on the ground when we were up there mm-hmm. looking at the kilns, you know it's like that was the last thing I had on my mind at that point. Well, in those charcoal kilns, because those things were built in the eighteen hundreds, you still go into them, you can still smell the charcoal. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's still that charcoal smell after after well over a hundred years, and that's where the trailhead for Wild Rose Peak is. So if I, when I climb Wild Rose Peak, that's where I start. I park at the charcoal kilns and then go on up there, and. Most of the way up the hill, you can still see the stumps where they cut the trees down. The stumps are still there from the what the eighteen eighties, I believe, is when they when they that thing was in its heyday because they made charcoal there so they could smelt the gold. Well, Kathy brought us back out after dark down Immigrants Pass. Okay, okay. which is part of it is still gravel road. Sure, and well, so it was open though. Immigrant it Pass was open. Was open. Yes. Okay, it was okay. open, but Joe was freaky. <laughs> Well, part of it was gravel, and part of it was used to be used to be uh, road. road. But yeah. you know, we're going to drive over it anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, well, the road they have out there a lot of times, if you get off of that main one ninety, is just desert road anyway, where they throw chat down, pour oil over it, put a put a steamroll over it, and that's your highway. And when the floods wash it away, well, then you you have more gravel and less highway. That's just how it works out there. And Kathy's husband Bill is with Search and Rescue. Out of Ridgecrest. Okay. And we, we had to stop and take pictures of, is this Telescope Peak or is that one Telescope Peak to, to bring back for him to look at? Okay. Well, there's Telescope Peak, there's Rogers Peak, and what's the other one? There's a third one. I've climbed all three. And then, of course, there's Wild Rose. It sets off to the side. But uh, Telescope is the highest point in Death Valley. In fact, when you get to the top of Telescope Peak, you can look across the valley and see Mount Whitney. You can see that from uh, Wild Rose as well. It's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. I I love Death Valley. Well, we did take a trip up to uh, Bishop, just just so we could look at Mount Whitney. Bishop is beautiful, and, and buy pumpernickel. Oh, at the bakery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's uh, it's on the east, west side of the main road of three ninety five. Mm-hmm. I've been, I've been there many times. They have a fantastic bakery up there, <laughs> and uh, we stay at the. I've stayed at the Motel Six right there. And the Motel 6 in Bishop, and I've stayed at the Holiday Inn Express in Bishop. 
Uh, we stopped at the rock shop in Lone Pine. Okay. And 